Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're diving deep into cybersecurity. Sounds exciting. You provided this awesome book, mm -hmm. and it's really comprehensive. Like, it covers everything. Yeah. From, like, the history of hacking to building a whole career in cybersecurity. We're going to go through each chapter and pull out the important stuff. Okay. So you can walk away with a good understanding of, like, how it all works. Sounds good. Maybe even get some ideas of your own. And to help us navigate all of this, we've got an expert here. Happy to be here. Cybersecurity is always changing. I'm learning new things all the time. Okay, so let's just jump right in. Let's do it. Chapter one, it's all about why cybersecurity is so important. And one of the first things that jumped out at me, yeah. hacking goes way back, like to 1834. Wow. That's before computers as we know them even existed. That's wild. It's crazy. So back then, France had this mechanical telegraph system. Right. Basically, they used towers with like these movable arms yeah. to transmit data. But even that system was compromised. It's true. Shows that securing data, it's always been a thing. It's like no matter how simple the technology, someone's trying to hack it. Always. Okay. So fast forward a bit <laughs> to the 1980s. Yeah. We have the Morse worm, the first computer virus. That was a big one. And what's crazy it wasn't created to be malicious. Right. Robert Morris, this grad student from Cornell, mm. made it to try to figure out how big the internet was. Yeah. But there was a coding error. Ah. Caused it to replicate like crazy. Uh oh. Infected tons of computers. Big mess. Caused a huge disruption. It was a wake up call, that's for sure. Showed how vulnerable computer networks could be. Totally. Then in 2010, there was Stuxnet. Targeted Iran's nuclear facility. Stuxnet, yeah, that was a game changer. It exploited zero-day vulnerabilities. Basically, software flaws that even the developers don't know about. So nobody even knew about them, and it still got in. It's really impressive in a scary way. And get this, it got into systems that weren't even connected to the Internet. Air-gapped systems. Yeah, so even systems that are totally isolated can be vulnerable. Absolutely. It's mind-blowing how sophisticated these attacks can get. It's crazy. And then there are so many types of attacks. Unstructured, structured, social engineering. Yeah, eavesdropping, web-based attacks. The list goes on. It's overwhelming. Definitely complex, but you got to understand the different types. Right. That's how you build effective defenses. Okay, makes sense. So let's take social engineering, for example. Instead of directly attacking the system, attackers use, like, deception and manipulation. Okay. They trick people into giving up sensitive information. Like those phishing emails we all get, <laughs> pretending to be from our bank. Exactly. Or like a trusted service trying yeah. to get us to click on bad links or, yep. or give away our passwords. Exactly. Social engineering, it preys on human psychology and trust. It's really effective. Makes sense. And then you have those massive attacks, like the Conficker worm in 2008 Why? created this huge botnet. Yeah, Conficker was massive, one of the biggest botnets ever, and it used this really innovative DGA algorithm. Okay, hold on. For those of us who don't know, what's a botnet? So a botnet is like a network of computers that have been infected, and an attacker can control them remotely to do bad stuff. Okay. And Conficker, it used this DGA algorithm, which stands for Domain Generation Algorithm. Basically, it let the malware generate thousands of random domain names. Oh, really hard to track and shut down it's like a moving target exactly attackers are always coming up with new tricks which brings us to chapter two yeah which is all about the evolution of security systems all right we've come a long way from those early days like with signature based detection like your basic antivirus software which just looked for known malware signatures yep patterns but as attackers got smarter it just wasn't enough. They shifted their focus from targeting individual computers to going after entire networks. Exactly. A good example is that OS theft back in 1970. Hackers, they didn't even use malware. Yeah, they exploited vulnerabilities in the network itself. Mm -hmm. And they stole a whole operating system. So it was more about finding weaknesses in the network yeah. rather than using malicious software. Exactly. And as security tools got better, attackers found new ways to bypass them. Always one step ahead. Right. In the 1990s, we saw a hacker break into 97 U.S. military computers. 97. Yeah. Show that even supposedly secure networks could be vulnerable. It's a constant arms race. It is. And then in the 2010s, we saw the rise of APTs. Yeah. Advanced persistent threats. Yeah. Yeah. APTs are all about stealth. It's not about causing immediate damage. They want to stay hidden within a network for a long time, maybe months, even years. Stealing data 
causing long-term harm. Like a digital sleeper cell. Exactly. And then on top of all that denial of service attacks, they showed us how easy it is to weaponize everyday PCs. Right. You can have botnets made up of thousands of compromised computers. Yeah. They can flood a website with traffic, crash it, prevent legitimate users from accessing it. It's kind of scary to think that your own computer could be part of an attack without you knowing. It's a real possibility. That's why awareness is so important. But there is good news. Cybersecurity is evolving, too. That's good to hear. We're seeing AI and machine learning playing a bigger role in detecting and preventing threats. So while the threats are getting more advanced, so are the defenses. Exactly. It's fascinating to see how these technologies are being used to fight back. It is. Speaking of technologies, Chapter 3 goes deep into learning about these cybersecurity technologies, which is especially relevant since you're thinking about a career in this field. Yeah, this chapter is all about the tools and techniques used in cybersecurity. And it seems like the demand for cybersecurity professionals is huge right now. It is. The job market is booming. Mm. And the skills you can learn, they can open up a lot of doors for you. Let's start with cloud security. I mean, it's super important as more and more organizations are moving their data and applications to the cloud. Makes sense. If our data is up there, it needs to be protected. Absolutely. And then you have data regulations and compliance. There's so much sensitive personal data being collected. Right. Organizations need to make sure they're handling it responsibly. Legally, too. Exactly. So it's not just about preventing attacks, it's also about protecting privacy mm -hmm. and complying with things like GDPR and CCPA. Right, right. Then there's penetration testing, uh, yeah, which yeah. is basically ethical hacking. You try to find vulnerabilities in a system before the bad guys do. Exactly. It's like being a digital detective. You're looking for weaknesses, loopholes that someone could exploit. The book even recommends some resources for penetration testing training, like courses by Troy Hunt. Yeah, he's a big name in the field. Yeah, he's great. Learning from experts like him is super valuable. And then we have DevSecOps. Okay. It integrates security into the whole software development process. So instead of tacking it on at the end. Exactly. It's built in from the very beginning. Yeah. It's a highly sought after skill. And then you have IoT security, the Internet of Things, hmm. securing all those interconnected devices that are everywhere these days. Oh, yeah. Like smart refrigerators. Smart thermostats, security cameras, all those devices that can connect to the internet. Right. Each one is a potential way in for attackers. Wow. IoT security focuses on the unique risks and vulnerabilities associated with all these devices. It's amazing how technology has changed our lives. Yeah. But it also creates all these new challenges for security professionals. It definitely does. And then you have user behavior analytics. UBA. Yeah, UBA. AI and big data come together to analyze user behavior, mm -hmm. looking for anomalies, things that might indicate a security threat. It's like having a security guard who knows everyone's routines. One can spot anything suspicious. Exactly. It's like having a digital Sherlock Holmes. Constantly on the lookout. Exactly. And lastly, the chapter covers endpoint detection and response, mm -hmm. or EDR. It's a crucial tool. It's about real-time threat detection and incident response monitoring individual devices, computers, laptops, mobile phones, looking for suspicious activity. So it's like having a security system on each individual device. Yeah. Constantly looking for threats. Exactly. A vital layer of defense in today's complex threat landscape. So this chapter covers a lot of ground. It gives you a good foundation, all the tools and techniques used in cybersecurity. That's a lot to take in. It is, but it's fascinating stuff. Okay, so we've looked at why cybersecurity is so important and how security systems have evolved. Right. Now let's get into the skills you need for a career in cybersecurity. Okay. Chapter four. This is stuff you're really interested in, right? Yeah, definitely. This chapter is all about different roles in cybersecurity, the skills you need for each one, and what the job market looks like. Perfect. So it starts by talking about all these different roles. Right, like penetration testers. Security analysts. Security engineers, managers, even CISOs. Mm -hmm. The chief information security officers. So it runs the whole gamut. And one thing that jumped out at me, there's a huge skills gap in cybersecurity right now. That's right. There's a big demand for qualified people. So good job security. Exactly. That's good news for anybody thinking about a career in this. But the book also explains why there is this gap. Yeah, there are a few reasons. One, a lot of the experienced people, they get drawn to the big tech companies. I Google. Yeah, Microsoft, Amazon, high salaries, exciting opportunities. So there's a lot of competition. Absolutely. Second, 
the gap between entry level and experienced people, it's getting bigger. The mm -hmm. field's changing so fast that it's hard for new people to catch up. So learning never stops. Never. And then the third thing, there's a high turnover rate. People are always moving to better jobs or they get burned out. So it's challenging, but there's also a lot of room to grow. For sure. Yeah. In this chapter, it lays out the foundational skills you need no matter what role you're interested in. Okay. Things like risk management, yeah. networking fundamentals, situational awareness, being able to like assess a threat and respond effectively, and then just being familiar with cybersecurity toolkits. Got it. Those are the basics. And then it dives into more specific skills for different roles. Like security analysts, they need to be good at things like threat and vulnerability assessments, log analysis, incident response, forensics. So they're the detectives. Exactly. They investigate security incidents, figure out what happened. Right. Then you've got your penetration testers that are like ethical hackers. So they're trying to find those vulnerabilities before the bad guys do. Exactly. They need to think like an attacker. It's a specialized skill set. They need to understand security concepts and they need to know how to use penetration testing tools. Okay. And then we've got security architects. Right. They design secure systems. From the ground up. So they need a broad understanding of security, design, risk assessment, frameworks, compliance regulations. All of it. They have yeah. to be creative, analytical, able to solve those complex security problems. Sounds like a challenging role. It is. Okay, so this chapter breaks down those skills, gives you a good roadmap. Now let's switch gears a little bit. Chapter five, the attacker mindset. This one's a little creepy. Yeah, it is. But it's important to understand how attackers think. Absolutely. This chapter looks into the psychology of hackers, their motivations, their tactics, how they think. So the book describes hackers as patient, determined, often insensitive to the consequences of their actions, risk-taking, meticulous, defiant of authority. Yeah, and they give some good examples, like the WannaCry ransomware attack in 2017. That's a big one. Caused huge disruptions, affected hospitals, potentially even led to deaths. It's chilling, the level of indifference. It is. And then there's social engineering, where attackers manipulate people into giving up their information. And they often target vulnerable people, like the elderly. Right. They might pretend to be a family member who needs money or a law enforcement officer. Prey on trust and fear. We need to be aware of this. Educate ourselves and others about social engineering. Definitely. And it's important to understand, attackers aren't always driven by money. So it's not always about stealing data for profit. Not always. The book talks about political activism, religious extremism, revenge, even just curiosity, a challenge. So making a statement. Exactly. If you understand their motivations, then you can develop better security strategies. It's not just about the technical stuff. You got to understand the psychology. Exactly. Okay. Chapter six, different approaches to cybersecurity. Right. Reactive, proactive, and operational security. Right. This chapter lays out different strategies that organizations can use to manage security risks. So reactive security, that's basically responding to threats as they happen. Yeah, it's like calling the fire department when your house is already on fire. Right. It might put the fire out, but the damage is done. So it's damage control, but not the best way to go about it. Exactly. Proactive security, that's about anticipating and preventing threats before they can cause harm. So being prepared, hmm. finding vulnerabilities fixing them before they can be exploited. Exactly. It's things like asset management. Okay. Knowing what you need to protect. Software inventory, keeping track of all the software on your systems. Configuration management, making sure your systems are secure. Vulnerability assessments. Regularly scanning. Malware protection. Antivirus and all that. Employee training. So it's multi-layered. It is. Technical measures, human awareness, it's a comprehensive approach. And then there are social engineering assessments, seeing how susceptible people are to phishing attacks and things like that. Yeah, it helps organizations figure out where the weaknesses are. And then web application security assessments. Those are important. Web applications are often targets. So proactive security, it's about staying ahead of the attackers, finding those risks before they can become a problem. What about operational security? That's about finding the balance between security and the needs of the business. Not every organization needs the same level of security. Right. So it's about being realistic, finding the right level for your specific situation. Okay, that makes sense. Now, chapter seven gets into networking, mentoring, and shadowing in cybersecurity. Right, this chapter highlights the importance of building connections. Especially for someone new to the field. Definitely, mentoring is a great way to get advice and insights. 
Learn from people who've been there. Right. A good mentor can help you identify your strengths, develop your skills, avoid mistakes, and connect you with people and opportunities. And the book gives some tips on finding a mentor. Yeah. Look for compatibility, expertise, willingness to share knowledge, good communication skills, and a shared vision. It's about finding someone who can really support you. Then there's networking. It's all about relationships. Attending industry events. Online communities. Professional organizations. Building your online presence. The book says it's important to build genuine connections. Absolutely have meaningful conversations. Share what you know. Learn from others. Networking can open so many doors. It can. And finally, job shadowing. That gives you a first-hand look at what a role actually involves. Like a behind-the-scenes look. Exactly. So we've covered mentoring, networking, job shadowing, <laughs> all good stuff. Now, let's get to Chapter 8, Cybersecurity Labs. This chapter is all about hands-on experience, different types of training, resources for developing practical skills. So it starts by talking about the different training options. Instructor-led, virtual instructor-led, and self-paced. Self-paced is getting really popular. Yeah, it's flexible, affordable, learn at your own speed. And the book highlights some free online cybersecurity labs. So you can get started without spending a lot of money. Yeah, and they provide a safe environment to experiment. Right. Practice your skills. Get that hands-on experience. The book even walks you through some examples. Yeah. Like the XSS exercise. That one teaches you about cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. And then there's the SSL test. That shows you how to check if a website's running on a server with misconfigured SSL, the protocol that secures online communication. And cl cloud-based vulnerability scans. To test for weaknesses. Penetration testing labs. Ethical hacking. And the book even mentions gamified learning platforms like CTF365. Capture the flag. It's a competition, but it's also a fun way to learn. Love that. So we've explored a lot different approaches to security, networking, mentoring, hands-on learning. Chapter nine is all about knowledge checks and certifications, ways to prove your skills. Right, certifications are getting more and more important in cybersecurity. It's a way to show you've got the knowledge and that you meet industry standards. Like a seal of approval. Exactly. And the book, it talks about why certifications are valuable. Okay. They show initiative, they showcase your skills, they give you job-specific knowledge, they can boost your career, they build client confidence, they help you market yourself. It's a win-win. It is. And they give you a guide to choosing the right certifications. Which is important. There are so many out there. There are. You need to think about the vendor's reputation, how long the course is, what other learners have said about it, the support they provide, how credible the certification is, what the job market wants, and most importantly, does it align with your goals? Makes sense. Find certifications that are respected and give you the skills you need for the jobs you want. Exactly. And remember, cybersecurity is always evolving. So getting certified, it's not a one-time thing. You have to keep learning. Continuous learning. Gotta love it. So the book highlights some key certifications. Come to IA Security plus A, that's a good starting point. Yep. CompTIA pen test yep. plus A for penetration testing skills. CompTIA CSA plus for cybersecurity analysis. Right. And then more advanced certifications like CISP, CCSP for cloud security. It's a lot to remember. It is. Do your research. Find the ones that fit your goals. Exactly. Okay, we've covered so much. We have. Essential skills, the attacker mindset, different approaches to security, networking, hands-on learning, certifications, chapter 10, all about security intelligence resources. Right, all the tools and information you need to stay up to date. It starts with checklist resources, which provide a structured approach to assessments. Checklists are good. Make sure you haven't missed anything. They've got a comprehensive security checklist in the book. Covers a lot of stuff. Securing personal devices, social engineering scams. Good reference to have. Okay, so checklists are good for the structured approach. But the book also covers cybersecurity news and advisory websites to stay up to date on the latest threats. Absolutely. Things change so quickly. So they recommend some good sources, like Naked Security by Sophos. They explain things really clearly. Dark Reading for more technical audiences. In-depth covered. And Krebs on Security, the blog by Brian Krebs. A must read. Okay, so news and advisory websites are key. Then they talk about cybersecurity training websites for more structured learning. Absolutely. So they highlight Slash Nest focuses on phishing. Important topic. Springboard, they offer a range of courses. Boot camps, career tracks. Cybrary, lots of free and paid materials. And the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. They have free resources too. They do. 
And finally, the book introduces the STIX and tax TCI standards. Those sound complicated. They are a bit technical, but they allow organizations to share threat intelligence securely. So working together. Exactly. Now, chapter 11. This is one of my favorites. Expert opinions on getting started in cybersecurity. Hearing from people who have been there. It's inspiring. So we've got Ann Johnson, corporate vice president at Microsoft. She emphasizes the importance of diversity. She says, our teams must be as diverse as the problems we are trying to solve. Ugh, love that quote. Diversity of thought, experience, background. Absolutely. And her career path shows that. Mm -hmm. CEO of Boundless Spatial, president and COO of Qualys Inc., VP at RSA Security. Wow, she's done a lot. She has. Okay, next up, Orhan Ergun and Ozan Okar, they founded KeepNet Labs. They talk about continuous learning. Making learning a habit. Reading, conferences, training. Hands-on experience. It's all important. Then we have Dr. Joko Simonovsky, a specialist in digital currency security. He talks about specialization. He says, cybersecurity is a wide area. Certainly, depending on your background, you need to determine which area of cybersecurity you will be researching. It's a good point. You can't be an expert in everything. Right. Find something you're interested in and go deep. Like he did with digital currency. Exactly. Then there's Paula Yanuskevich, founder and CEO of CQURE. Okay. She says, if you want to start your adventure with cybersecurity, start with the most common things. Learn how to break a system from the inside by using Metasploit or PowerShell Empire. Hands-on approach. I like that. Dive in, get practical experience. And she gives specific tools to start with. Yeah. Metasploit, PowerShell Empire. Okay. Next up, Steven Sims, Senior Manager at EY. He talks about work ethic, passion for learning. He says you need to continuously be learning and honing your skill set. You need to have a natural desire and passion for problem solving. Cybersecurity. It's not for everyone. If you don't like to learn, it's not the right field. You got to be oh. passionate. Okay, Robin Basham worked in various cybersecurity roles. He says, be a constant student. There are many free training resources. Don't be afraid to ask for help and reach out to the cybersecurity community. Community is so important. Collaboration, knowledge sharing. Ask questions. There are tons of free resources online. Yeah. And then there's Erdal Eskaya. He wrote the book we're talking about. He talks about mentorship and networking. Mm -hmm. He says, networking, mentoring, and finding the right coach can help you excel in your career. Having a mentor can be so valuable. It can. And Erdal Eskaya, he's a great example of that. He's built a strong network. He's always willing to help others. Okay, Onur Seren. Chief Inspector at the Cybercrime Department of the Turkish National Police. He brings up the legal and ethical considerations. He says, whether we like it or not, the environment itself imposes the need to keep pace with the development of technology and therefore cybersecurity. It's not just about the technology. It's about the law, ethics, the impact of our actions. He's got a unique perspective. He does. Okay, Neil Rerup, Chief Architect at Enterprise Cyber Solution Architects. He talks about being adaptable embracing new technologies. He says, I have always been learning about new IT technologies, and as a result, I have always been ahead of the curve. Lifelong learning is so important. Technology is always changing. You got to keep up. You do. Okay. Gerard Musa, director at SAP. He's got a great attitude. He says, cybersecurity is fascinating. It is like being on the superheroes team fighting the villains. It is continuously changing and never, ever boring. Love is energy. You have to be passionate about cybersecurity. You do. Okay, Koshal K. Chaudhry, Executive Director of IT and IS. He tells a story about taking initiative, learning, and growing. He says, while launching an application over a naval network in the Eastern Naval Command, the challenge was to protect information from unauthorized access. Knowing full well the implications of any loopholes, I decided to first educate and test the network myself before even seeking any external help. Be proactive, curious, willing to learn. Take on challenges. Okay, Matthew Scott, he transitioned into cybersecurity from a non-technical field, shows that it's possible to change careers. It is. It takes work, but it's possible. Find the right resources and support. Absolutely. Okay, Mahmoud Nabil Mahmoud, CISO at PGSCO. He says, based on my experience, I would highly recommend anyone joining information security to have the following. The passion for technology and security, curiosity and continuous learning, the right certification for the right job, and the awareness of new technologies and threats. Passion, curiosity, continuous learning. And awareness of new stuff. The landscape is always changing. It is. Okay, Phil Huggins, Senior Cybersecurity Consultant at Bridewell Consulting. He gives some practical advice on finding a job. He says, if you lose your desire to learn and try to learn how to instead of why to, 
you won't be able to switch from the long neck bog llama to the short neck bog llama. You'll get bored playing the same songs, and in the end, find yourself getting cross with the instrument. I love that analogy. Understand the why, not just the how. Keep learning. Cybersecurity is always evolving, and he also talks about the importance of English skills. Especially for international cybersecurity. Okay, John Clay, Director of Global Threat Communications at Trend Micro. He talks about networking and relationships. He says, it's not just what you know. It's about who you know. Network and build relationships. Go to conferences. Online community. Reach out to people. Give back to the community. Build a strong network. So networking is key. That brings us to the end of the Expert Insights. What a great chapter. So much good stuff in there. Yeah. And it leads perfectly into the next chapter, which is all about how to get hired. So we've heard from all these cybersecurity experts. Lots of great advice. Now let's get down to business. Chapter 12. Landing that first cybersecurity job. It's like a roadmap for the whole process. It all starts with your CV. Right. It's your marketing tool. Got to showcase your skills and experience. Grab their attention. The book says you really need to tailor your CV to the specific job. Absolutely. It's not one size fits all. Highlight the skills and experience that match what they're looking for. Okay. And the book gives some really specific examples of what to highlight for different roles. Like yeah. if you're going for a security analyst position, you'd want to mention incident response, log analysis, threat intelligence. Right. But if you're more into ethical hacking, you'd focus on penetration testing tools, vulnerability assessments. Got it. So know your audience, tailor your message. Exactly. And the book also has this helpful checklist of what to include. Your contact info, a professional summary, work history, technical skills, certifications, even hobbies that show you're passionate about tech or problem solving. So paint a picture of yourself. Yeah. Show them who you are, what you can do. Okay, so you've got a great CV. Now, the interview. The book talks about different types of interviews. You might have a structured interview, very formal set questions, mm. or an unstructured interview, more conversational, more flexible. And then there's semi-structured, which is a mix of both. And they give tips for handling each type. Plus, they even go over common interview questions. So you can be prepared. They might ask about your strengths and weaknesses. Your teamwork experience. Yeah. Problem-solving approach. Your passion for cybersecurity. It's not just about the right answers. It's about showing how you think. Mm. And your communication skills. Exactly. Be yourself. Be confident. Let your enthusiasm show. Okay. So you nailed the interview. Now you've got multiple job offers. That's awesome. But how do you choose? That's where chapter 12 comes in again. It helps you evaluate the offers beyond just the salary. Yeah. Think about work-life balance, company culture, opportunities for growth, your potential manager, salary transparency, the company's values. So finding the right fit. Absolutely, a place where you can thrive. This book has been packed with information. It has, we've covered so much ground. From the very first tax to the latest AI and cybersecurity. We talked about the attacker mindset, different security strategies, all the skills you need for a career in this field. And hopefully you have a much better understanding of how complex and constantly changing it all is. Definitely. The world needs people like you, passionate and skilled, to protect it from cyber threats. What a great way to wrap things up. You have the knowledge now, the resources are out there, and there's a whole community ready to help you. So go out there. Make a difference. Make your mark on the world of cybersecurity. And never stop learning. Stay curious, stay informed, keep exploring. Great advice. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into cybersecurity. We hope you found it informative and inspiring. Yay. And we hope you feel empowered to take that next step in your cybersecurity journey. Until next time, stay safe and stay secure.